welcome back to my channel. If you're brand new, my name is Jessica Alexandria. I'm the creator of Body Life Apothecary, professional witch, tarot, and astrologer, and intuitive. Thank you so much for tuning in today to vibe with the energy of this week, what we can expect, what is ahead. I feel really called, I wasn't planning on doing this at all, but I feel really called to mm, not remind you guys, but put it out there that we are in really tumultuous times in the world, right? And I feel very protective. The word that's kind of coming through is a guardian. I feel like I'm very protective of my people and my people are you. Even if you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel and you're passing in and going out kind of like a cloud, that's totally fine. That, that, that's a vibe for me. Chances are people who come in and go out, they keep coming in and going out. But it's up to you to decide if you want to subscribe or not. Either way, I'm still feeling responsible like a guardian in protecting you and the messages that I deliver in the time that we have here together. That being said, I'm really feeling called right now to say that it's not, I don't think that it's very healthy for me to share exact visions and prophecies for all of what we are in the middle of what we're undergoing right now at this point in history. I think that it's very important that we keep the vibes as high as possible and in a space of love and light. Because for some of you guys, with everything that's going on on social media, with everything that's going on in the news, with everything that's going on in the world, and definitely in your personal life, it can almost feel torturous. That's the word that I'm going to use. It can almost feel torturous to add on more trauma of these images in your brain of things that could happen, things that are happening, things that have happened. Do you know what I mean? So when I say guardian, I feel very protective of you. And I want to take my role here, me showing up and sharing my messages and my visions with you. I'm very aware of my responsibility of picking and choosing my words and also using discernment in exactly what it is that I share and the way that it is that I share it. That being said, um, no one's really asked me for this yet, but I don't feel it's important um, or necessary for me to share detailed specifics. I want to talk to you guys about what the energy looks like overall. And you guys probably have noticed this, that I went from sharing more detailed specifics on what I can see for us now and then also into the future. And I kind of steered away from that simply because we are in the middle of those visions and prophecies that are currently manifesting and revealing themselves now. Um, as I'm saying that, the strength card reversed showed up. And this card is truly about being very care careful and cautious and mindful of harshness making sure that we're not inviting harsh and abrasive energy into our world, into our lives. So I don't know why I felt called to start off by saying that first and foremost. And then also at the other base of this reading, we have the Six of Pentacles here, which is being very aware of what we give and what we take. Um, so, and this is not just in physical material manifestations, if this is our energy, what we are applying our attention to and what we are asking ourselves or being called to kind of redirect our energy elsewhere. So I really want to put that out there. So that being said, my loves, um, thank you for tuning in and spending time with me as I shuffle the cards, as I channel messages, and as I pull the chart, which is right ahead of me at this moment in time. Before we dive into the details in, of this video, I want to give a shout out quick to my new sponsor to the YouTube channel, which is such an exciting development for me. The fact that I even chose something or found something that is that I like and they like me and then we totally agreed on our terms and conditions to the coldest water who sent me this <laughs> awesome ice cup that keeps your water super, super cold, arguably maybe the coldest. And they put this stamp on the side of my name with Bahati Life for the Bahati Life YouTube channel, which is just so solid. For those of you guys that don't know, I love my coffee and I love my water, specifically water with ice. That is a new development for me along my path, my journey, because when I was growing up, I did not like ice cold water. I actually liked my water room temperature, but that's fine. Ice in general for me is a luxury and I love staying hydrated. I think that it's one of my top 
tips when it comes to in 616 on the clock for those of you guys that are all about synchronicity. It's one of my top tips that I use for working with goddess energy but working with the spiritual realms as a whole is working with water making sure that your body is hydrated not only for health reasons but also when you're intuitive when you're empathic you really want to make sure that your body is staying hydrated as as much as possible because it helps to not open up those channels but keep those channels that are already open that you're already developing and working with in your intuitive practice keeping them open keeping them well hydrated because we don't like a dry barren body that's good for nothing okay and the other thing too that i really like about this is i love the, the color that they sent me it's very red it's very powerful that is not something that i would normally have chosen for myself but i will be diving into setting intention when it comes to water and using water to manifest. So I would love to share a video with you guys about that, but shout out to The Coldest Water for not only sponsoring me, but also the YouTube channel because it's stuff like that, really cool alliances that you guys know I'm picky in particular, but when I link up with someone, it's because it's for an awesome reason and I love our connection and I love what they're offering you guys. I will send you guys links down below in the description box in the comments. Um, so you guys can check it out and get your own coldest water beverages and it does keep your water cold for the longest time, trust me, okay? And that is such a luxury. I know that sounds absolutely crazy, but it, ab it absolutely is a luxury and I'm not saying that because they sponsor this video. All right, so first things first, the sun is absolutely still moving to the sign of Virgo, which now that I'm saying that, that's pretty significant because this is really... A reminder for us to take care of our mind our body our soul our spirit to use discernment and to pay way more detailed attention into our rituals our routines people don't think about this enough but how you start your day and the things that you do throughout your day from how you eat and the energy around what you're eating what you're taking into your body but the practice of that is an intention it's really an intention and if you are not paying attention to these rituals and routines that you do throughout your day you could be inviting in chaotic energy into your life chaotic energy into the mind chaotic energy into your being with sun moving through virgo and with mars moving through virgo there's a hyper focus on paying attention to those to, to your routine tweaking it perfecting it into something that is more ritualistic in the form that it is that I'm saying that it's from a higher vibration so that your day-to-day -day practice, your day-to-day -day routine is something that nourishes you and supports you. This could be something so simple as waking up in the morning morning and having a drink from your water cup or, or just having a drink of water, period. Um, from setting an intention, writing your intention, writing your, uh, you know, practicing your daily gratitude, going for a walk. When it comes to your diet and your routine, making sure that what you're eating is whole foods, as pure as possible. It doesn't need to, not everything needs to be organic, but taking care of your, your body, your physical body. And when you're eating, making sure that you're t totally turning everything off, putting your phone down, to turning the phone, the, the TV off, blocking out the world, putting in some music or whatever it is that you need in order to take even that meal and be practice mindfulness within it. Virgo energy is known to be very, um, I don't want to say erratic, but a little um, anxious, a little fidgety, okay? I'm a Virgo, so I know. It can be very fidgety type of energy, especially if the body, the mind, the soul, the spirit is not grounded. There has to be some level of grounding routine um, in order to stabilize you, in order to protect your spirit, in order to help strengthen your discernment, especially as Mars is moving through the sign of Virgo at this moment in time, right? Mars is also going to be trying Pluto, Pluto retrograde, which that's going to be happening on the 1st of September. And this is even more of, of a really important and impactful time for you to set powerful rituals, um, routines, and structures to set them into place into your day-to-day -day life that will protect your health, protect your well-being, protect your state of mind, and also protect your magic. The other thing that I'm looking out at right now is the fact that Mercury, which rules the mind, rules the words that we use, rules the spoken word, rules our ability to set intention and to, to manifest, materialize magical things, um, and to speak life into ourselves and to others, is moving to the sign of Libra. While Venus, his sister, is there also vibing in the sign of Libra, just totally in her element, totally in her zone, right? 
what I can see here is there's this natural um, space for people to want to connect, to want to harmonize, to want to merge and mix and mingle together. With that, you want to absolutely pay attention to your psychic antenna. How does the energy of the people around you, how does it make you feel? Not from a logical or emotional place, but from an intuitive place. Honor and respect that. I'm almost getting the words record that. So that means that on this day, maybe if you have a planner or agenda or a journal, you can write down or make a note, okay, this is how I felt around this person and it stands out to me because it didn't make me feel good. This is how I felt about this person and it stands out to me because it made me feel amazing. Those are things that I really want you guys to pick up on more so now and the, the rest of this month as we move into the September is the energy of what people bring into your life. And also, I heard the word abundance with that. I feel like there's some people that just being around them, they make you feel good. And something about that taps into an element of even more plentiful abundance. Abund abundance. Um, and I'm also seeing that some of you guys are spending a lot of time mixing and mingling when it comes to playtime and letting your hair down and having a good time, keeping things not so serious. It feels like your friendships or your connections or your conversations are very not serious in nature. They're not grounded in long investment as much as they are enjoying the present moment at this time. This is not just romantic relationships like as I'm saying. This is just connections as that you're having, period. Who it is that you're mixing and mingling with in as far as coworkers. If you're going out, let's say you're going to a bar, or if you're going <clears throat> to the park or going to a, a club, meaning like a place of people with like-minded interests, the conversations are, are, are not so serious and investing for the long haul as, more, as, more, as much as they are focusing on the pleasure of the moment. And there's nothing wrong with that. Sometimes it's good to keep things light. Sometimes it's good to think, keep things cordial. There is this strong sense of um, having a keen eye on exactly what it is that you want. This exploration stage, this ex exploration space that you're in right now is vital to you discovering this next level as far as what it is that you want for yourself, what it is that you see for yourself, and just allowing yourself to tweak it and to perfect it moving forward. And you can use all of September in order to do this, okay? Most of all of September. Then we're going to enter into Libra season and things are going to get a little bit more flip-floppy and wishy-washy and then committed on the, on the opposite side. We'll cross that bridge when we get there, but for right now, let's just focus. <laughs> we will have to cross that bridge when we get there. <laughs> All right? So that's really what it is that I'm seeing here. Mars is a very powerful player this, this week, you guys. This is all about what it is that you're doing, what it is that you feel called to do. I'm seeing a lot of yoga. I'm seeing a lot of biking. I'm seeing a lot of hiking. I'm seeing a lot of um, going for walks. I, I think I said that kind of with um, hiking. Maybe it's just going through the walks to the park, spending time outside picnicking, being in nature, things, that, things like that. And I don't know why, but I just heard the word rule breaking. Some of you guys on the, the never the next level to this, your rule breaking is going to be in what you have already advocated for and you're setting the, the grounds, you're exploring uh, the new rules, the new way, okay? So maybe this has to do with children or maybe this has to do with uh, policy change, policy reform is something that's coming through. So if you're advocating or you're, you're trying to discipline something or whip something into shape or get something tight within your work environment or your, your purpose, this is about examining what has been broken, examining what isn't working, and then setting it to place, at least exploring, because again, there's a space of, I don't feel like what you're trying to set into stone, what you would ideally want to set into stone, it's not the time for it. I feel like you're gonna notice that a lot of people are mixing and mingling right now. They're not really committed so much, so to speak, as much as they are kind of give them the space to kind of explore and see what they want as you're doing the same thing for yourself. You're gonna get further with that, I promise you, okay? So let's go ahead and flip over these cards and see what else is wow. <laughs> Look, the Lover's card and the Two of Swords is the first card that jumped out, the first card that, that popped off. Okay, and this actually makes a lot of sense 
with um, Venus here still moving through the sign of Libra. She's going to be squaring off with Pluto retrograde. Again, the dynamics of of commitments, the, the, the dynamics of the grounds, the dynamics of the bank account, the dynamics of, you know, what you felt like you wanted to organize for your life, for your relationships, for your, your money, for your savings, all those things are kind of getting re restructured at this moment in time. They're, they're transforming to say the very least, especially on the 5th, September 5th, Venus is going to be squaring off with Pluto. And that can be a really tough time when it comes to relationships. It can also be really groundbreaking when it comes to relationships and connections or when it comes to spending. This is when you hear about something or you feel called this week because it's not just the 5th. It's going to be this week and moving into the next week. You're going to feel really called to reassess a, a really strong pull desire something that is that you might be lusting after something that is that you want for yourself this could be relationships and it could be also finances things that, that have monetary value so with this two of swords and with this lover's card here I didn't even know that these cards were pulled this absolutely confirms what is that I already said which is give yourself the space to kind of feel things out first and allow yourself to be pulled in different directions in order for you to discover what your heart truly wants Okay, and I've also just heard the word surrender to this process. This means that we don't want to get so caught up again in our logical and our emotional brains as much as we want to allow ourselves to surrender to our intuitive bodies, our intuitive wisdom, our intuitive selves that will help us to decode, decipher, and to feel out the vibes that are around us and make a note of it because these are things that we are going to ultimately set into motion on our vision boards that things is that we're going to manifest things that are, is that we're going to materialize the center of this reading wow the tower card and also the eight of swords so what i can say for the collective is that there are a lot of things and this makes a lot of sense because of what it was i said in the very beginning of this video there are a lot of images there's a lot of things that we're seeing thinking believing doing about ourselves, about the world, about what things can possibly be that we don't want to get so hung up on, to get so caught in, caught in, because everything is, I don't say everything, but a lot of things are topsy-turvy right now, and we have to trust the process. Trust the process. I'm also hearing the word reform. That is going to be a, a major message a major word now moving forward into the future so it's going to be all about reform reform i see this in your life and i also see this in our government our politics i'm also seeing it within how you look at yourself you are totally reforming you are totally reharmonizing rediscovering aspects within yourself within your relationship and within the world that may not have been in alignment and been harmoniously linking up. And then this tower moment comes through, shakes it all up, blasts the bricks of the foundation all over. And then you come through picking up the pieces, figuring out what you can work, figuring out what needs to be thrown away, and then re-establishing a new foundation for yourself. And what used to really trip you up, what really used to, um, I don't know why I just heard the word mustard. <laughs> That's really random, but I'm almost like, it's almost like, like a spicy mustard, it's like horseradish or something like that. It's really like clear as day. You can clearly tell what you need to walk away from. Eight of cups just popped out. What you need to walk away from, you can distinguish. And it is something that you, either you love it or you hate it. You know, there's no, there's no in between and it, it can really, it's like very obvious. I don't know why mustard is what spirit is using in order to reveal that message, but it's very obvious. It's very potent. It's very clear. You know what mustard is. Like, I, I know that sounds absolutely bananas, but I don't, don't shoot the messenger here. So there are some things that were absolutely lost that were absolutely, you know, wiped out and you get to decide what feels right for you now, but spirit is really clearly telling you, don't do this from a logical or an emotional side, do this from an intuitive side, and this is something that can take some time. The other card that, is, that I'm seeing here, absolutely, look, four of pentacles, this is what is reversed, and also three of pentacles. This is literally what it is that I'm saying. What was kind of pulled away from your hands, out of your grip, out of your grasp, is now 
what is left is what is that you're now currently building with. Reform, rebuild, restructure, renew, reorganize, redo, right? When I say the word redo, you're not going to do it in the same way that it already has been done. You're doing it in a way that works best for you now because you've evolved. You've come such a long way. Now there's aspects, Spirit wants me to tell you this, there's aspects of yourself that are not okay with the current state. They make you anxious, they make you annoyed, they make you irritable, and that sense of annoyance and irritability comes from such a deeper place that Spirit really wants you to acknowledge. The reason why they're irritable, the reason why it's making you irritable and annoyed is because those are the aspects that do not serve you anymore. It's not that you're a bitch, it's not that you're a bad person, it's not that you are manipulative or ungrateful or whatever the case is, whatever characteristic it is that you might be fixated on. It's the fact that that space is giving you anxiety for a reason because you're, I'm, you know, for lack of a better word, the PTSD is still there. There's an aspect of you that recalls things that you have experienced that now your spirit, your logical, your emotional brain, and also your intuitive brain is now trying to protect you from. And as I'm looking at that, I, I'm seeing... I'm being called to look at the gator head. Gators in general, they are a token of history. They're a token of trauma. They're a token of self-protection and also not revealing everything, sometimes laying low. I, I definitely see that, that when you are rebuilding and restructuring and reforming, you are going to factor in, you're not gonna pretend like what already happened didn't happen and just rebuild as if, you know, th those parts of yourself are just completely healed or don't exist anymore. You are going to rebuild and with more consideration for the things that make you irritable and anxious and annoyed because those things do not serve a role and that's another thing that is that you are gonna walk away from. You are being given an invitation in order to realign and reharmonize with the things that do feel good for you, the things that do, they may challenge you, but you understand their role, you understand their significance, and you're inviting them into play in your healing process now, especially with Chiron retrograde. This is where we ask ourselves, who am I, what do I want, and I'm gonna put myself first now, definitely, okay? Look at this, oh goodness, we have 10 of swords, so so many endings here. Ten of Swords reversed and also the Knight of Cups reversed. The This is Spirit saying this week, we are going to give you the opportunity, the, the chance and the space, and we want you to give yourself the opportunity in order to mourn things that were lost, in order to process your emotions, good or bad, whatever that is, and to get it all out. If you feel a surge of excitement, be with that just feel it. If you feel, feel a surge of sadness or gratefulness or gratitude or you have, I'm also getting a lot of physical activity. I see two sides to this. I see those that are going to want to spend additional time grounding themselves and there are those that are going to be out, you know, get, get those feelings out by jogging it out, being physical activity, having physical activity in order to get those energies moving. And then there's going to be those that are going to be a, a, um, in a combination of the two, but definitely with this lover's card here and two of swords, feel out the energy. How does it make you feel? What is truth? What is, what are you aligning with, aligning with? What are you harmonizing with? Honor that process. Also, I'm really getting this strong message right now to pay attention to the small treats that you give yourself throughout the day. Something about those small rituals and those treats. Um, maybe you stop, you, you do something hard, you know, that day and then you reward yourself with, you know, a nice cup of coffee or you go to your favorite coffee shop or maybe you go out, you cook yourself a nice meal or maybe you, something that rewards you for a job well done. I really am seeing that here. Seven of Wands and the Ten of Pentacles reversed. This really is telling me, believe it or not, that all is not lost. I heard the word fairy tale. Yeah, I'm hearing the word fairy tale. And yeah, and I hear all is not lost. Some of you guys are feeling like you're, you've tapped out. Uh, that's really interesting. It feels like you've given all that you can give and now that's it. This It's like a person who feels like they've hit their highest high and this is as high as it goes because you've already experienced the highs, you've already experienced the best or you've experienced something that was awesome and maybe this is it for you. 
Spirit is saying no, that that's kind of fairy tale thinking. Um, and that's just simply not the case. I don't know why that's coming through. And Spirit says the reason why you're feeling that is because you're defensive. There's a part of you that's defensive and there's a part of you that uh, there's a, a part of you that wants to give up, but the biggest part of you, this intuitive part says, no, the race isn't over yet. Um, there's still a lot to be done. There's still a lot to, uh, secure. There's still a lot to experience. Don't give up yet. In fact, I'm feeling like the rituals that you're doing in your day to day are going to help you to pull away from the bigger picture and start to focus on the smaller things that give joy and pleasure into your day will calm you down, center you, and you will start to feel creative and inspired and coming back to life even more than you once were. This is 1000% connected to, to creative projects, matters of the heart, self-worth, self-value. I'm really interested to see this. Look at this. King of Pentacles and the Nine of Cups reversed. King of Pentacles understands so much about how slow and steady investments in small things can make a big difference. Saving up a little now, putting some quarters in a, a jar can really buy a house one day. <laughs> and this is where I feel like the King of Pentacles is showing up in the reading to say, listen, we want you to really seriously look at yourself and ask yourself, what is the Nine of Cups for you? What is your wish fulfilled? What do you want? As you have walked away from certain things within your life, you will discover along the map of your life that there have also been treasure chests that were buried and hidden for you to discover that we want you to be open towards. Yeah, look, Eight of Wands was a card upright, Five of Swords and Queen of Swords. This is a lot of mental chaos in the head that has you believing like, is this possible? Can this be done? I'm doubting it. I don't know if it's realistic. And I, I'm hearing the word reform again. So there's aspects within you guys right now that need to hear that this is the mindset that needs to be reformed or that is currently under reformant, um, if that's a word. And I really want you guys to look at your totem, your animal totem this week. I really strongly feel this is going to be the alligator. The alligator or the crocodile, you choose. And I would love to hear which one you guys are vibing with the most, the alligator or the crocodile. Um, there's definitely some significance there. All right. So, all right, my loves. That is what it is that I'm seeing for us this week. I'm going to shuffle real quick and just see if there's anything else that spirit wants to say. Or maybe we'll work with the goddess. Yeah. So let's just sit for a moment, ground ourselves, center ourselves. Okay, that one jumped out. I don't want to get another one. Mm -hmm. So the overarching message for this right now is your wisdom. I really feel like this is not logical wisdom. It's not emotional wisdom. It's intuitive wisdom. This is about surrendering to the wisdom of the divine in order to divinely inspire you throughout this divinely chaotic time. Bing, bang, boom. Also, the number 35 is coming through on this card for me. It's really calling my attention to it, 35. So three plus five equals seven. Five, six, seven, eight. No, it's not. It equals eight. Five, six, seven, eight, yeah. So this feels like really tapping into, and that makes a lot of sense, tapping into divine infinite wisdom. There is no end to what can happen. There's no, there's an infinite amount of treasure chests. I just keep getting this vision of treasure chests being buried for you to go out and discover them or for you to go in and discover them. So there's that. All right, so let's see what else we have here. Wow. Oh. I love this. Sorry. We have water. I was just talking about this. We have flow. And we also have romantic love. Now, 
I mean, that's just, it's just as perfect as it goes. But what I can really truly say is that the best things in life are not forced. They are not forced. And it kind of reminds me of what it was I was saying before, which, I mean, again, I know that the coldest water sponsors this video, but drinking water and staying hydrated allows those channels within your body in order to flow and be fluid and to not force and to fight the magic that is flowing within you, the, the, the energy, the electricity that's flu flowing um, through your body and that you can project out into the world. If you are dry, whether from crying, whether from running, from being exhausted or doing the very most, this is a time of plenty. This is a time of abundance where you want to restore your body, renew your body by drinking water, whether that's ice cold water or lukewarm water or hot tea or swimming in the body of ocean, you don't want to fight or force the flow of water. You want to invite it into your life, drink the water, nourish your body. Romantic love at the center of this, there are things that you are, it's like spirit really wants you to enjoy the fruits of this life and they want you to begin that now. I really see that some of you guys, you are truly speaking life into your water. You're speaking life into your intentions and charging your water and drinking that on a cellular level. And I feel like you have to hear that the best is yet to come. This feels romantic. It feels impossible, but it's true. I feel like creates being creative comes from being poured into a person who is creative and can't create anymore. It's because they've, they've exhausted themselves. They've tapped out. So you want to pour back into yourself, stay hydrated. Yeah. I mean, this message just really just goes without saying. I'm also seeing spending times in bodies of water or near bodies of water. Absolutely. I'm, I also can't ignore the fact that Aphrodite, even though she's not represented by water, she has two swans by her. I don't know if you guys can see that. They're in the background. But they spend a lot of their time on water. Drifting, swimming, just, you know, casually floating by. And that's what it is that I'm seeing for you guys this week. If you are focusing on setting intention for love, I feel like you need to speak a lot of love and life into yourself every single day. Know that you're worthy. Know that you are worth it. Know that you are abundant. And I'm also hearing, I need to hear that I'm pretty. Tell yourself every day how pretty you are, how handsome you are. It's not always about your strength. It's about your beauty as well. That's very important too. You have to understand that you're a beautiful, you're, you're a beautiful being. Okay. Um, I'm also seeing the shower time and bath time being very significant to your beauty practice, your glamour practice, um, and your rituals. Okay. So I hope this message resonates. If you are setting attention for love and wisdom and creativity and prosperity and abundance in your life, this is an awesome week to do that. We also have the new moon in Virgo that is sneaking up pretty shortly and I will dive into that for you guys as well. Make sure that you're subscribed to my YouTube channel because there's plenty more videos where this came from and I will see you in my next one.